In this video, I am going to introduce you to Lava, which is Large Language and Vision Assistant. One of the cool things about this new Vision Assistant is that the quality of its inference is very high as compared to rest of the competitors in the market at the moment. Lava is a large multimodal model or LMM that combines the vision encoder and Vicuna for general purpose visual and language understanding. It represents an open source alternative to GPT-4. It's a huge claim, but it seems that this Lava is well, in, well on its way to compete with that. If you look at its project page, then you would see that the instruction tuning large language models using machine generated instruction following data has improved zero shot capabilities for new tasks in this language domain. So this lava is the first attempt to use language only GPT-4 to generate multimodal language image instruction following data. The researchers of this model have introduced an end-to-end -end trained large multimodal model that connects a vision encoder and LLM for general purpose visual and language understanding. If you look at their project page, they have various descriptions for conversation, complex reasonings, and a lot of other information. Their early experiments show that Lava demonstrates impressive multimodal chat abilities, sometimes exhibiting the behaviors of multimodal GPT-4 on unseen images instructions and yields a 85% relative score compared with GPT-4 on a synthetic multimodal instruction dataset. They have fine-tuned this on SciQL, and the synergy of Lava and GPT-4 achieves a new state-of-the-art accuracy of more than 92%, which is huge. Another cool thing about this model is that everything is publicly available. And when I say everything, it means that their GPT-4 generated visual instruction tuning data, their model and code base, everything is publicly available. Let me show you a quick demo of this Lava. And this is available on their project page too, and I will drop the link in video's description. So here you can either drop an image or click to upload. For example, let me drop an image from my uh, <clears throat> local system. So there you go. And then I will just start chatting about it. That yep. What is the return in this image? And then send. And then it is. <clears throat> processing it and you can see um, how cool, how fast it is and how um, accurate uh, inferences. Now, one thing, there are slight mistakes like I don't have 7.8, there is no 0.8 here. So I'm not sure, maybe it has just inferred it to be accurate. Okay. Is there anything unusual about this thing? Enter. Okay, oh, yes, there's a, uh, and you can see that it is say, saying that there's a man face in corner of image, which is unusual element. This is a YouTube thumbnail for the YouTube. I think this will stand out for YouTube. You can see that not only it has recognized my question, it is also offering its opinion and it has problem with my image, it seems. Um, so this is good, and but uh, this is a bit of a, a opposing um, content too. On the first few lines, it is saying that this image might uh, not be good, but then towards that it is saying that it might pick the interest of viewers who are curious about the context or the person behind the video. So let me try out a few more. So maybe let's let me go with the 
bit of a complex one. Yeah, so I think I got this image from somewhere from um, internet. So I'm sorry you can't remember from where, but let's try it out. How many apples are there in the video? In the image, sorry. Let's see what it does. And you can see that it has identified 11. So let's count them 4, 8, and 3, 11. So you can imagine how cool is that. How many apples are in first row and in the last row? Let's check it out. Okay, and so there it has lost a bit. It is saying that first row 4 apple, correct? In the last row, 11 apples, which is wrong. Above answer is wrong about last row. Can you recheck how many apples in last row? Let's see what it does now. Again, so it is stuck with its last row elements. Okay. How many apples in row three? Okay, now it has correctly identified that there are three apples. So you have to play around with your prompts in this. Now, if you want to install it locally, there are also a few steps, a bit, uh, but you would need quite a beefy system for this. Installation is pretty simple. All you need to do is to first git clone the repo. Once you have done, go into that folder with a coda, install all the requirements, and then install Ninja and Flash attention, and then upgrade, and then um, download their weights and other stuff too. And then you can launch that Gradio web UI and then you can access it. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you already are using it, please share your experience. And if you have any other thoughts, please put them in the comments. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you.